I think we can all agree that 2020 has been a little bit weird and that the professional and amateur race calendar alike has been well and truly knocked sideways. Now I firmly fall into the latter category and in 2020 I was hoping to have a go at a couple of hill climbs and maybe even make some fun content around them. In particular I was hoping to have a go at my local and quite famous Catford hill climb but understandably they've had to shift the event back to 2021 and it won't be happening this year. However due to the wonders of modern technology I can still have a go at the climb so there can still be plenty of pain and suffering. How? Well I'm going to use my new Wahoo Kicker Turbo and by partnering with a Wahoo Element cycling computer and by inputting the Strava segment for the Catford hill climb I can actually make the turbo simulate the climb including distance and gradient and for those that don't know the Catford hill climb is around 0.7 kilometers long has an average gradient of 12 percent and kicks up to around 20 percent at its steepest section near the end although this is somewhat hotly disputed with many people saying that it actually hits around 25 percent so I'm not just doing this for the sake of hurting myself although that seems to be what a lot of hill climbers actually do it for. Um, I still intend to give the actual event a go in the new year and this first effort will let me sort of benchmark where I am and then work closely with Sufferfest to develop some training plans that will hopefully give me an edge when it comes to racing the actual event and also give me something to work on over the winter time. Now, of course, all of these training plans will be available for you guys to see down in the description below on Sufferfest and do check them out if you'd like to give hill climbing a go yourself. Now, there's just one thing left to do and that's to ride the damn hill. So I'm here with the new Wahoo Kicker. This launched just a couple of weeks ago at the beginning of August and it is a seriously cool piece of kit. It has a max power output of 2000 watts which uh, last time I actually tried to do a max power output I couldn't even get over a thousand so I think it'll be able to deal with my measly little legs but within that it's able to simulate gradients of up to 20%. Now there are a few other really cool things that Wahoo have done with this new version of the kicker which make it even more accurate. So those of you that ride other turbos know that you have to spin them down to keep them accurate. Well the new Wahoo kicker has got rid of that. You no longer have to do that manually. Instead it does it all itself inside the unit. Now it self calibrates constantly throughout a session which means it's always as accurate as it can be and in fact in many cases it's getting more accurate as the session goes on. So because of this it has an accuracy rating of plus or minus 1% rather than the plus or minus 2% of the previous model. And finally it's got these really cool new axis feet on there um, which simulate the sort of rocking motion of you riding uphill. I also was lucky enough to get given a Wahoo kicker climb to stick on the front of the bike and now this is such a cool piece of kit. I've never used one before and I'm really excited about testing it out. However, before I could attempt the effort, I needed to get some advice. So I called up Mac Kasim from Sufferfest in search of some much needed help. Uh, hi Mac, how's it going? Doing well, how about yourself? Yeah, not bad thanks. I would say I'm a little bit um, worried, I don't know if that's the right word, about the effort I'm about to do. Um, I'm a bit of a newbie when it comes to this type of thing. So I'm wondering if you can give me some background about what I should expect on a hill climb effort. Yeah, so, so hill climb efforts over in the UK are quite a bit different than, than here in the States, especially Boulder, where I'm located, where they're normally you know, 10 plus kilometers. You guys don't have those, those hills over there. So the hill climbs, the efforts, that you guys have for hill climbs are incredibly short, incredibly high power, and really are more, you know, anaerobic work capacity um, type efforts rather than long sustained sort of more endurance um, type hill climbs. So, so the effort itself is going to be a lot more, uh, you know, violent. Essentially, you're going to put yourself into a pretty, you're going to have to put yourself into a pretty deep hole in a very short period of time. Is it going to be a, a more sort of, is it going to be tougher on my legs or is it going to be harder on my breathing? What should I expect to feel like? 
Yeah, generally, um, you know, it is gonna, you're generally gonna hit muscular fatigue or feel muscular failure before you hit cardiovascular fatigue. Part of that's just, it takes a while for your heart rate and breathing rate to catch up to any effort you do. Um, so for the first, you know, say 30 seconds of this, your heart rate, you might have the pre-race or pre-event jitters, your heart rate might be a little high, but it won't really catch up to the demand that you're asking your asking of your body um, until basically near near the end. That burn you get from really short, hard efforts, that's what you can expect. And if you don't have um, the right gearing, if you get really bogged down, then that might be exacerbated, especially you know if you're going over 15, 16% gradients, you're out of the saddle, that becomes a whole body effort. This will be an effort that is gonna be over threshold power for the entire duration. But generally for, you know, two, two and a half, three and a half minutes, you can expect to be anywhere between 100 and 125 and 145% of that. For this duration, for about three minutes, you'll, you'll be hitting peak heart rate. If you pace it well, you'll be hitting peak heart rate most likely, you know, five seconds after the effort is complete, but you'll get very close to your max heart rate by, you know, the two and a half, two and a half minute mark. Okay. Well, off the back of that, I think it's probably time that I actually go and do the damn effort and see how I get on. Matt had covered the physiological side of hill climbing, but to lay down my best effort, I needed some advice on digging deep. Fortunately, I knew just the man, Phil Guyman. How do you ride when everything is screaming in pain and telling you to stop? <laughs> How do you get yourself to, uh, to carry on? The, the trick is to, to pace your, your pain and misery. So the trick, I always divide every climb into thirds. So, so I'm thinking, at the beginning I'm thinking, okay, hold back, go easy. And in the middle I'm thinking, all right, be steady. And at the end I'm thinking, okay, now bury yourself. And I find if, if that's my thought process and that's how it feels, the actual power is dead flat <laughs> for, the, for the effort. I often find when it starts to get a little bit painful, um, it's, it's all too easy to sort of dial back the gas a little bit. How do you refocus yourself every time when you, when you kind of just want to be pulling back, you need to focus yourself to go forward again? You just got to stare down at your stem and, and, and buckle up. There's, there's, a, there's an element of just like, you know, do I want this or not? Like, what am I doing here? The thing, the, the steeper the gradient, the, the good news is you have to use more muscles, but the bad news is you can use more muscles. You can really, you can really use every muscle in your body if it's steep enough. You know, for, for the real steep stuff, like you're using your arms, you know, like that, that motion, that's something that like I would train in the gym as I would hit, I would hit weights and do like rows. Um, so yeah, you, if you, if you do it properly, you can, you know, you're using your back, your neck, your shoulders. Uh, your arms. Pedaling isn't just a leg activity, you know, over 10%. If you do it right, there's a fair chance that, that you'll vomit if it's a... Yeah, oatmeal's coming back. My, my warm-up protocol, if this is useful, I, I never look at power, I only look at heart rate. I would sort of look at, um, at trying to hit at least like 165 beats a minute in your warm-up before, before you start. Um, that's when you're ready to go. Right, I'm off, I'm warming up now, ahead of my big effort. So I've listened to Phil's wise words. I'm gonna warm up for an hour ahead of time. Um, I've got the climb hooked up, got the kickers working nicely, and most importantly, I've got my fan. It's my number one fan in the window. Hey, enjoyed it, I enjoyed it. Okay, I did it. Effort done. The lactic acid was so bad. 
Oh my god. Good uh, legs just seized up in about the, the second third. I was trying to do what Phil said, split it into thirds, but the segment just starts so steep. Basically don't have an option but to just bury yourself from the very beginning. By the time I crossed the line, I was just absolutely holding on, completely cooked. I was also like surprised because the front end kicked up so much on the kicker climb. It's like from the very beginning, if you thought it was a steep, it just went straight up. And then when I was looking down at my roam, I could just see that it was like 15, 16, 17 upwards percent. It just wasn't easing straight into my easiest gear, but not a chance you're gonna be able to spin. And now to analyze the results. Oh Lord. I felt like my legs and breathing were the first to fatigue or to go. Um, it ramped up very quickly from the get go. And I found that, you know, I was immediately shifting down through my gears into um, my easiest gear and then just having to sort of churn and alongside that I felt you know breathing was was quite difficult it was a real like sort of after a while it was almost like panic breathing you know your body's a bit shocked. The lungs are really interesting because they're one of the only organs that you know will essentially your body can run them on its on its own without you thinking about it but then you also have the ability to take control of them. So, so one of the things with that is um, that's actually a really good area that you can focus on and, and train as you're going up. Like when the effort first starts, just be starting with really deep, deep breaths. And if you can, what will happen is once people get to that really fast breathing rate, they're actually not taking full breaths. Their tidal volume, so their volume of oxygen per breath starts to go down. That's, that's problematic. Um, you can train yourself to even when you're at your very limit to be taking really full deep breaths um, And it's a really helpful tool just being aware of that when you're trying to pace an effort and then yeah looking at your pacing um, you, you definitely hit a go out hard and hang on for dear life sort of pacing a metric used for climbing is VAM, which is essentially the Italian acronym for the meters per hour that you're ascending and so for that first, from 50 meters to 150 meters, you know, you averaged 480 watts for that period, and your VAM was just over 1100. Then when we talk about the final 100 meters, you averaged 340 watts, so it had died off quite a bit, but your VAM was almost 1700. So for 100 and whatever, 40 watts less, your VAM was significantly higher just because of just because it's steeper at the top. And so this is one of those hill climbs where if you really look at the gradient for even the first 200 meters, it's not that crazy steep. It's really that, like you said, that final 400 meters where it just really kicks up. So it's almost like those first 200 meters, you know, whatever your average power goal is for the ride, like you almost want to be under that for that first portion. Okay, so you want the peak like the peak power is to come on this specific hill climb late later on at the at the steeper bit ideally those really steep parts that's where you want to be putting out the most power because that's when you're going to get the most vertical gain per per watt you're putting out how do you practice being able to sort of go again when you already feel like you're very deep already one of the ways i think works best for that is doing um a set, like a session that we used to call the Pyramid of Power. Um, it's actually in the, the Sufferfest app under the shovel. And that's a series of micro intervals that, you know, you start at a five second sprint, 55 seconds recovery, 10 second sprint, 50 seconds recovery, 15, for, and you work your way in five second increments with the effort getting longer, power dropping a little bit, recovery getting shorter, and then you go back up. And then you do you do that whole set twice. But what it forces you to do is do these efforts that have, you know, 10, 20, 30 watt changes in target power. But all those targets are, are well above threshold. 
So it, it really trains you to get that sort of finesse of, okay, this is what 420 feels like right away, and this is what 450 feels like right away. The only other thing would be um, cadence, and I think you, you've you sort of alluded to, to how you went out, but um, you hit a max cadence of 119 RPM, which is a little excessive for a hill climb. That's excess strain that you did not need to put yourself through at the start. And then especially as you, as you go on through the effort, your cadence sort of steadily drops. And again, the steepest part, the average, you're, you're like around 60 RPM, which if you're out of the saddle is, is fine. It's on the low side for if you're out of the saddle, unless like you're really truly out of gears and that's just the easiest gear you have, then that's what it is. But generally out of the saddle, you're gonna be a bit more efficient if you can stay around 70, even for those really steep bits. Now you've pulled together some Sufferfest training plans that you think might be useful for me. Um, what do you have in mind? Thinking of just individual workout sessions that you can be doing. Um, one that, again, we already mentioned was the shovel, which has those micro intervals. Another one in particular for hill climbs is gonna be, it's called the trick. And it's got four one minute, essentially max efforts. And, and those are designed that they're partially done out of the saddle partially done seated. And they actually have one transition where you start standing, you sit back down, power drops a bit, and then you stand again, power goes up. You know, that's gonna be a session that will um, help that transition seated to standing. And then also just, it works on that really top end power. Another session um, would be half as easy, which has two sets of 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off. Again, those 15 second on sections are, are well above what you'd be doing on the day, but the 15 seconds of recovery is just enough that you can keep hitting that um, system just again and again and again. And that's, you know, these sessions aren't particularly pleasant. They're gonna be hitting that sort of muscular and respiratory fatigue that you, you hit on the climb. And they are gonna be, you know, pushing, um, pushing your body so, far in terms of like, let's say blood acidity, that they're gonna be very, very unpleasant to do. Well, thanks so much, Mac, for your invaluable advice and also your very pleasant way of talking about what I didn't do so well and your lovely way of talking about what I did do well. I do appreciate it. This was my first ever hill climb effort. And I'm really looking forward to trying out those um, training sessions from Sufferfest that you suggested although maybe looking forward to isn't quite the right word, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the benefits that they can bestow on me as a bike rider. So thanks very much for your time. Oh, absolutely. And looking forward to, to the next file you send me of your next attempt. So there you go. That was my first ever attempt at a hill climb, even if it was done on a turbo rather than outdoors. I must say I enjoyed it. It was pretty painful. I really went quite deep but at least i now have some cool training plans to work on for when the event does come back and of course you can work on your own training using these plans and you can dig them out in the description below special thanks to phil gaiman for his uh, invaluable advice and to matt for those training plans and be sure to check out the content that we've got coming up in partnership with wahoo and sufferfest it's going to be pretty tough However, in the meantime, you can check out the rest of the content on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe to us. It really does help us out and give us a thumbs up if you like this video. I'll be back soon with more great content and I'll see you then.